You may not be aware of this, but you and I live in a Tesla created world, which is generating trillions of dollars every day for superpowers around the world. In his day, Nikola Tesla was ridiculed, demoralized, laughed at, and elbowed from society. He died in a hotel room in New York City, broke, alone, and unacknowledged. His life was of such eccentrics that even Thomas Edison was jealous, to say the least, of Mr. Tesla's extraordinary achievements. Tesla knew secrets, secrets he never shared with the elite of the world. He had secrets that he tried to use to benefit all of humanity. We are talking ancient technology awareness here, guys. And the greedy, power-crazy people of the time were not happy about giving anything away for nothing. Tesla paid the price, but also warned the greedy elite, the present belongs to you, but the future for which I really work towards is mine. He was, of course, a thousand percent correct. In this short presentation, we will try to tell you a little bit about the great man, a little bit about his inventions, and a little bit about why you live in a Tesla-created world today. We will tell you everything we know about the most selfless man of the modern world. He was once quoted as saying, the scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Just wait till you hear this. When you talk about being born under a wandering star and all that, well, this guy was born under a blaze of glory during a fierce lightning storm at the stroke of midnight in 1856. It was like something out of a science fiction novel. The quintessential mad genius had arrived. He was the chosen one sent to the earth to present to humanity the next phase in the quantum imagination of our understanding of everything, something only a genius would dare to envision. At first, he was sent all over Europe to troubleshoot and improve Edison design dynamos and motors. This was frustrating for Tesla. Why? If he could make better improved versions of someone else's inventions, could he not have them built this way in the first place? At the age of 28, he immigrated to the United States after an extensive educational program during the Austrian Empire. Tesla was ready, empowered with the knowledge and the know-how to transform the world. But how would he go about this? Where would the funding come? His first instinct upon arriving in the U.S. was to become a worker at Edison Machine Works. Tesla was a huge admirer of Thomas Edison, but he knew Edison's ideas were flawed. Nonetheless, Edison was not for changing his mind when Tesla tried to show his idol where he could make changes, and therefore, Nikola Tesla struck out on his own. Tesla began accumulating the information needed to patent his improved version of Edison's arc lightning system, something he tried to tell Thomas Edison how to correct. In March 1885, he met with patent attorney Lemuel Sorel, the same attorney used by Edison to obtain help with submitting the patents. Sorel introduced Tesla to two businessmen, Robert Lane and Benjamin Vail who agreed to finance an arc lightning manufacturing and utility company in Tesla's name, the Tesla Electric Light and Manufacturing. Once Tesla had the company up and running, the two businessmen abandoned the great inventor, changed the company's name, and left the man with no money. This was only the first in a succession of betrayals, but by this time, Tesla had already came up with ideas for alternating current motors and wireless energy. Going forward, he was now more wary of the scavengers, but had little choice to look for some sort of funding to produce his magnificent ideas. During this period, Tesla was reduced to working various electrical repair jobs for a dollar per day. He recalls in his notes, my high education in various branches of science mechanics and literature seemed to me like a mockery during 1886. This was a trying time for a man who had the ideas in his head that could transform the world, yet he seemed to be going nowhere. No one was buying into his ideology. In late 1886, Tesla set up a meet with Alfred S. Brown, 
a Western Union superintendent, and New York attorney Charles F. Peck. The two men were experienced in setting up companies and promoting inventions and patents for financial gain, of course. Based on Tesla's new ideas for electrical equipment, including a thermomagnetic motor idea, they agreed to back the inventor financially and handle his patents. Together, they formed the Tesla Electric Company in 1887, with an agreement that profits from generated patents would go one-third to Tesla, one-third to Peck and Brown, and one-third to fund development. This was his big break, and this is where things started happening, and the name Tesla was soon well known in New York City. The money Tesla made from licensing his AC patents made him independently wealthy and gave him the time and funds to pursue his own interest. This is where it all began and what ultimately caused such a stir at the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago. The vision of Edison and the vision of Tesla for how electricity would be produced and distributed can be summarized as one of cost and safety. The DC current that Edison, backed by General Electric, had been working on was costly over long distances and produced dangerous sparking from the required converter. Regardless, Edison and his backers utilized the general dangers of electric current to instill fear in Nikola Tesla's alternative alternating current, trying to ridicule Tesla in a world where Edison held a monopoly over the inventing and newspaper pull. This led to the accumulation of over a decade of shady business deals, stolen ideas, and patent suppression that Edison and his moneyed interests wielded over Tesla's inventions. Yet despite it all, it is Tesla's system that provides power generation and distribution in our modern era. Tesla may have had a brilliant mind, but he was not as good at reducing his ideas to practice. Tesla described to his funder and business partner, J.P. Morgan, a new means of instant communication that involved gathering stock quotes and telegram messages, funneling them to his laboratory where he would encode them and assign them each a new frequency. That frequency would be broadcast to a device that would fit in your hand. In other words, Tesla had envisioned the smartphone and wireless internet over a hundred years before the ideas were fully put to practice. Does that not just blow your mind or what? He also conceived of, but never developed technology for radar, x-rays, a particle beam death ray, and radio astronomy. Tesla invented many wondrous things, including the laser, robotics, remote control, radio, and light. But his big idea for free wireless energy and a global communication network, the internet, was where he was halted in his tracks. This is inextricably linked as they were the last straw for the power elite. What good is energy if it can't be metered and controlled? Free? Never. JP Morgan backed Nikola Tesla with 150,000 to build a tower that would use the natural frequencies of our universe to transmit data, including a wide range of information communicated through images, voice messages, and text. This represented the world's first wireless communications, but it also meant that aside from the cost of the tower itself, the universe was filled with free energy that could be utilized to form a worldwide web connecting all people in all places, as well as allow people to harness the free energy around them. Essentially, the zeros and ones of the universe are embedded in the fabric of existence for each of us to access as needed. Nikola Tesla was dedicated to empowering the individual to receive and transmit this data virtually free of charge. Nikola Tesla had perhaps thousands of other ideas and inventions that remain unreleased. A look at his hundreds of patents shows a glimpse of the scope he intended to offer. If you feel that the additional technical and scientific research of Nikola Tesla should be revealed for public scrutiny and discussion instead of suppressed by big industry and even our supposed institutions of higher education, 
Join the world's call to tell power brokers everywhere that we are ready to occupy energy and learn about what our universe really has to offer. The release of Nikola Tesla's technical and scientific research, specifically his research into harnessing electricity from the ionosphere at a facility called Wardenclyffe, is a necessary step toward true freedom of information. When he died at the New Yorker in New York City, broke, alone, and frustrated, the FBI seized all of Tesla's documents, the information was stolen, and his envisioned ideas were released to the public at various intervals during the past 70 years, Tesla never being mentioned or credited for any of these world-changing ideas, and all done for massive financial gain and control. Many people are only vaguely aware of Tesla's inventions and scientific discoveries. We learn that because the FBI considered him a threat, information about him in mainstream USA was suppressed. This is evidenced by the school system leaving him out of its history books. Part of Nikola Tesla's vision comes from a vivid childhood. In his memoirs, he writes, the memories of my youth and even of earliest childhood are very vivid and it seems to me that my character began to develop a little sooner than is the case with most people. As a very small boy, I was weak and vacillating and made many childish resolves only to break them. But when I was eight years old, I read The Son of Abba, a Siberian translation of a Hungarian writer, Josika, whose lessons are similar to those of Lou Wallace and Ben-Hur. This book awakened my willpower. I began to practice self-control, subdued many of my wishes, and resolved to keep every promise I ever made, whether to myself or to anyone else. The members of my family were not long in learning that if I promised a thing, then I would do it. One of the more controversial topics involving Nikola Tesla is what became of many of his technical and scientific papers after he died in 1943. Just before his death at the height of World War II, he claimed that he had perfected his so-called death beam. So the FBI and other US government agencies would be interested in any scientific ideas involving weaponry. Some were concerned that Tesla's papers might fall into the hands of the Axis powers or the Soviets. The morning after the inventor's death, his nephew Sava Kosanovic hurried to his uncle's room at the Hotel New Yorker. He was an up-and-coming Yugoslav official with suspected connections to the Communist Party in his country. By the time he arrived, Tesla's body had already been removed and Kosanovic suspected that someone had already gone through his uncle's papers and projects. Technical papers were missing as well as a black notebook he knew Tesla kept, a notebook with several hundred pages, some of which were marked government and top secret. Of course, we will always ponder the true extent of Nikola Tesla's discoveries and inventions Many of his ideas, we conclude, could have been taken to the grave with him. The master of lightning, though mostly remembered for the Tesla coil and the alternating current, was of a different understanding, a higher level of thinking than anyone on Earth before or after him. His ideas are slowly being realized. We can only hope that the greatest genius will be given the credit he deserves as history prevails and a technologically advanced world that the great man envisioned in his imagination becomes recognized as a Tesla created world. One thing the great man was obsessed with was strange radio signals that he kept detecting in 1899. Tesla recalls in an article he wrote, I can never forget the first sensation I experienced when it dawned upon me that I had observed something possibly of incalculable consequences to mankind. I felt as though I were present at the birth of a new knowledge or the revelation of a great truth. Even now, at times, I can vividly recall the incident and see my apparatus as though it were actually before me. My first observations positively terrified me 
as there was present in them something mysterious, not to say supernatural, and I was alone in my laboratory at night. But at that time, the idea of these disturbances being intelligently controlled signals did not yet present itself to me. The changes I noted were taking place periodically and with such a clear suggestion of number and order that they were not traceable to any cause then known to me. I was familiar, of course, with such electrical disturbances as are produced by the sun, aurora borealis, and earth currents, and I was sure as I could be of any fact that these variations were due to none of these causes. The nature of my experiments precluded the possibility of the changes being produced by atmospheric disturbances, as has been rashly asserted by some. It was some time afterward when the thought flashed upon my mind that the disturbances I had observed might be due to an intelligent control. Although I could not decipher their meaning, it was impossible for me to think of them as having been entirely accidental. The feeling is constantly growing on me that I had been the first to hear the greeting of one planet to another. I was not merely beholding a vision, but had caught sight of a great and profound truth. It is thought Tesla was either detecting the Black Knight satellite or a distress call from deep space. During the 1930s, ham radio operators began listening into these signals. In 1936, it was concluded after a decipher that the message was plotting the route to a star chart in the constellation Boots. And it is thought through the movement of the stars and taking into account the speed of light and distance to Boots that this message could be over 13,000 years old. What are your thoughts on the late great inventor? We hope you enjoyed our presentation. Please thumbs up and share. Thanks for watching, guys.